in prison. 107 All right, we are back. The long awaited since August Sirhan Sirhan follow up. Wow, that took a long time, and that seems like years ago, Eric. It kind of does. But then these past couple of years feel like two decades anyway. Right, right. Good point. Good point. <laughs> okay, so today we're going to be going over what went down with the parole hearing a little bit, but then most of all, the aftermath, because there's a lot of behind the scenes stuff that you've been telling me about through time. And I'm just going to be kind of leaning back, throwing up pictures where you want it, and just trying to keep up with the flow. Because Man, you- it's a complicated story. So... Anywhere you want to start, you direct me, Bob. Uh, just okay. So uh, people are gonna have to watch this twice because <laughs> I <I'm> have <laughs> to watch this twice. I don't even know what I'm gonna say here because there's so much information. We're not gonna talk about the physics of the killing. That's the next episode. We're not talking about the coroner report. We're not talking about mind control. We're just talking about the parole, and that's a lot of stuff about the parole. Um, we could barely fit that in, so we're gonna mm-hmm. have to wait, right, Eric? Or, we got the, oh yeah 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 i mean well we have talked about the pro before i encourage everybody to check out part two i will right. also be putting up the entire transcript and maybe even audio recordings of the parole hearing so people can get it in its entirety and get every nuance you know obviously because we're not going to cover every single thing so right. that'll all be on unstructured.locals.com so right please check and, it out and yeah and you uh can go there and read a lot of other stuff we're going to put up regarding this case oh yeah there, there's gonna be a dump Right. Yeah. We're, <laughs> no, well, we've been holding back because we were waiting for this decision, right, Eric? Yeah. We, yeah. We've been trying to be fair about it, not influence a decision or create any noise uh, politically. But now that it's over, I feel like I can release the gag. Oh, uh, and it, it could it, it could have caused problems. So I mean, yeah, we definitely yeah. had to wait. I mean, yes. some of the stuff we're going to talk about is really sketchy. It's really dicey. I, I mean, this is it's personal, so it's it's causing me such. Uh, a certain amount of anguish to even go into this, but this is a good forum to do it. Uh, just to give you the backstory on this, how we, how I got into this position, I had written a um, a script um, on the RFK assassination and Baxter Ward, uh, who was a city councilman and a newscaster who had dedicated his life to solving the mystery of the second gunman and the assassination. And that script went to Oliver Stone and uh, long story behind the script. But nevertheless, Paul Schrade had gotten the script and Paul Schrade here was one of the victims who was shot in the, in the head uh, by Sirhan in the Ambassador Hotel that night. Uh, Schrade was a union official very close to the Kennedy family. He's 92, I think 93 years old now. And um, Schrade loved the script and we became friends. So he lives nearby, and I was shooting a documentary of Schrade's life uh, at his house over the course of the summer, this past summer. Even though it was COVID time, we still were able to shoot outside, and it, it was kind of, we, we were able to pull certain episodes off. I shot a few hours of footage, and Schrade then told me about Sirhan's parole hearing coming up the end of August, and he asked me if I would mind speaking on his behalf. And I said it would be an honor because of his age. And uh, with this guy too, right? He was involved. Right. RFK Jr. was involved uh, very close with Paul Schrade. He's the second oldest Kennedy. And um, Thank you, Thomas. Thank you, Thomas. The, the situation evolved where I was asked to represent Paul Schrade at the parole hearing. And the parole hearing, he obviously he's down in San Diego, Sirhan. And RFK Jr. had visited him a number of times and became convinced, like the rest of us, including Paul Schrade, that uh, Eugene uh, Cesar was the killer. Uh, here's a photo, fairly recent uh, one of Sirhan, I presume. Yeah. Um, just to give you the numbers, he's 77 years old. I think he's been in there for 53 years since he was 26 years old. Had a spotless prison record, uh, attended AA meetings, different um, uh, 
learning experiences in prison. They gave letters of commendation from the guards. He'd had 15 parole hearings before, uh, all of them with different lawyers, and all of them in the parole hearings, when I analyzed them to do some research, the one thing I learned that you're not supposed to do in a parole hearing is to relitigate the case, Eric. That's, mm -hmm. that, that's taboo. And the people who came on board this case, um, other than Angela Berry, who was the lead attorney, who was wonderful, and, and uh, Melissa Austin, her uh, a junior attorney, they were just by the book defense counsels. There were a couple other people um, who came on board. Uh, one was this uh, Jenna Breu, and the other one was Denise Bowden, who apparently had other agendas, um, which didn't bother me because I didn't know them or anything. But anyway, the yeah, here you see the 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 various women <laughs> involved there. That's uh, Angela Berry in the upper left hand corner. She's a, the lead attorney, very good defense attorney, straight shooter. Um, She's at a, she has an office in Encino, and I think on the extreme right is her assistant, uh, junior attorney, uh, Melissa Austin, who's Canadian. In the middle is Denise Bowden, whose father uh, wrote a book about the polka dot dress girl. Uh, Fauna, Fora was his name, and he was a reporter for a small regional newspaper here in L.A. Uh, covering the case back in the uh, late 60s, early 70s. So she wanted to make a documentary about, and she apparently had made a couple of documentaries, but she is a family attorney out of San Diego that deals with children of broken families. And the woman on the far left is a prison advocate um, named Jen Abreu. Jen who, Catwoman Abreu. Yeah, with the <laughs> special, special glasses that see through things. And that's Paul Schrade, who I said was shot in the head uh, right in the middle of his forehead, actually, um, by the Sirhan gun. Now, the reason all of this stuff is important is because it's it's clearly obvious that he's been rejected for parole every single time because these uh, lawyers that he's had over the years have tried to uh, relitigate the case, basically, in the parole hearing, which is the last thing they want to hear. They want to look at your record. They want to hear about remorse. And they they want to see if you're suitable for outside the outside world. So mm -hmm. that being said, when I went into the parole hearing, I realized that I was not going to say like I was not going to say anything what I just said about the case. The, the plan that I had and the plan that Paul had was to get, I believe Paul's plan, it was my plan at least, is to get Sirhan out of jail simply as the opening of the door to opening up the investigation into the case. I, I really right. didn't care about Sirhan. I mean, I do care about him just in terms of, of uh, a guy being in prison all this time who didn't shoot Kennedy in the back of the head as, as Thane Eugene Caesar did from one inch away, according to Thomas Noguchi's perfect autopsy. And I say the word perfect in quotations because it was called perfect by the LAPD, the LA district attorney, the LA prosecuting attorneys in the case. And he brought in um, the heads of all the different military divisions in the United States to oversee the um uh, the autopsy, and also Cyril Wecht, and also uh, Fink, and also many others who oversaw the autopsy. And indeed, it was an open and shut case, because in the autopsy, when you look at it, you quickly realize that Kennedy was shot at point blank range behind the ear, behind the shoulder and under the armpit. And Sirhan was never in back of him. He was never within an inch of him. And, you know, multiple, multiple witnesses said he never got within three feet of him in front of him. Right. Let alone Thane Eugene Caesar. And that could be a, a whole different episode about Thane Eugene Caesar. I think, did we cover him? Yeah, we did. We, we did. Okay. The most so recent we, we one, we covered what happened and right. okay. he was being held down at the time. So it would be very difficult to be pinned down and in front right. when the guy right. was getting shot. Right. But he did get <laughs> off the shots that wounded the other people who did recover uh, from their wounds from the twenty two caliber. Yeah, uh, everybody but Bobby. Everybody but Bobby, right, who was shot in the back of the head at point blank range, right? So there mm -hmm. were extra bullets and blah, blah, blah. And there was cover ups and destruction of evidence by LAPD, all of which Paul and I felt with um, Gasson, as crazy as Gasson is, our belief and my belief was that Gasson's main thing is to go after bad cops in old cases. Nothing reeks more of bad cops in old cases than this particular case from 1968. So in, a, in an odd way, Gasson, who for the first time 
in the history of the parole of Sirhan refused to send a representative, thereby giving, uh, in an indirect way, uh, a tip of the hat to being in favor of Sirhan being paroled. Because in previous paroles, the other 15, the DA showed up, or assistant DA, and was opposed to the the release of Sirhan. In this case, uh, Gasson, whatever you make of him, at least was consistent to his own policies. And that's all you can really ask. I mean, he's being recalled now and we can't get rid of him fast enough. And and, <laughs> and, and he didn't and, serve his purpose. Well, he sort of served his purpose. It just wasn't enough. Right, right. It didn't happen fast enough because if, if Sirhan would have been released, this could have been done actually. And the case could have been reopened in my opinion. Mm -hmm. And that was the goal. And it still is my goal. I, I believe Sirhan is innocent. I believe he should be paroled. And I believe the case should be reopened. Those are the three things that I still believe. However, as in previous cases, people involved in this thing have different agendas. And, you know, who knows where they're coming from? They might be deep state people trying to keep him locked up. There might be a, a lot of different reasons for their actions. I was kind of oblivious to this because I was focused on testifying in the parole hearing. And, and that's where we are coming into now in this story. I think it's August 27th, uh, 2021, right? This past August was the- Something like that. Yeah. Right? Okay, yeah. so in the opening of it, there's two, just to give you the setting, there's two uh, commissioners and there's a bigger parole board, which is I think 14, they're appointed by Newsom. And usually they rubber stamp um, the opinions of the others. I guess they operate in groups of two. And they usually just rubber stamp each other because they, you know, agree with each other, uh, you know, most cases. Um, is this a copy of the transcript of the parole? Yeah. And you're down here with oh, that's um, my copy, all the people. I, yeah. My name is on there and the other people are on there. Okay. Well, it's not your copy. It's his inmate copy, I hope. Oh, that's his copy. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Because they did send me a copy afterwards. I was wondering if that okay. it says inmate. Well, mine doesn't say inmate, right? Mine. Well, I don't know. I, I hope it doesn't. <laughs> We've oh, yeah. got some yeah. other technical considerations of the right. show. Well, we're going to put this up on Locals for our members to read. Uh, these are We have some really inside documents for people to get a look at, including, if you, you'll see in there, my, my testimony. Okay. So here's the deal. What... For years and years and years, and this is a, a very common situation in prison cases with uh, involuntary manslaughter, murder, car crashes. A lot of times people are drunk and high and they can't remember the events. You'll, you might have a mother with five kids who smashes headlong into a tractor trailer, right? And she can't recall it because she was drunk. So to express remorse to get parole is difficult if you can't remember the crime. Keep this in mind because it's key to the case. And all through the years, whether you're into mind control or not, I didn't want to address that in the case. Yeah. So as some of you know, I'm also a, a registered drug counselor in the state of California. So part of the op, part of the situation with Sirhan is a non-drinking, non-using tiny man. He drank mm -hmm. four Tom Collins that night in rapid succession at the bar and said he was drunk, said he was in a blackout and couldn't remember shooting. Now, in any other case, in any other case, that would be evidence and we take it under advice for parole. It doesn't mitigate your guilt. You can't say, I don't recall. And that's not what this is about. This is about expressing remorse for something you don't remember because you're in an alcoholic blackout. That was the crux of my uh, testimony. And to my surprise, both commissioners agreed with me. And they're both ex-police officers who done, according to one, done hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of BAC, breath alcohol tests on drivers. And this guy, to his credit, I think his name was Robert Barton, to his credit, agreed with me and said that this is what this case is about in general. And I offered to take Sirhan to 12-step meetings when and if he got out out of Pasadena. And the I said, I'll take him to three meetings a week. And the commissioner said... That won't be necessary. Two will be sufficient. And he agreed with me. Now, keep in mind, he had attended for many years in prison uh, Alcoholics Anonymous meetings because of this. And they acknowledged that in the uh, parole hearing, that he had successfully, even during COVID, had gone to AA meetings in the prison. When the segregation in the prison was, was mandatory, he still went to meetings. So it wasn't a lark for him 
if you know what I'm saying. Yeah, his record was spotless. His me. record was spotless, and the AA thing was indicating that he realized in those meetings that he had a problem. And it's not about volume. It's not about not drinking in prison. It's got nothing. It's, it's alcoholism is is a type of mind disease. Whether you have alcohol or not is irrelevant. Once you remove the alcohol, that's when the disease is manifest and has to be treated. And there's various ways to treat it. Well, the alcohol is treatment for a condition that's within the person, right? Exactly. It's like okay. taking a sedative for for anxiety. Now you take away the sedative. Now you got to deal with the anxiety. Okay. okay. You know what I'm saying? It's a terminal lifelong chronic illness that has no cure just like diabetes just like asthma just like a, a kidney ailment that needs a dialysis machine for treatment that's the equivalent medically anyway he goes to aa for years i'm thinking to myself okay here's a guy who every day says my name is sirhan i'm an alcoholic this is what he says every day or in these meetings right this is this mm -hmm. is the way he's saying it he does whatever he did in the in their minds in a blackout in a mm -hmm. blackout Forget about mind control because we're going to get into that later. And I and I agree that mind control did occur and I agree hypnosis occurred. But for the sake of getting him through this parole hearing, I said to myself, I'm going to take this line of reasoning to talk to these two ex-cops in their own language, in their own prison language. And to my surprise, they paroled him. <laughs> and nobody was more surprised than You're me. Like, it worked. Wait, wait it, it actually worked. What I happened? Done because the guy said this went on for three hours. This thing, but he said we're going to come back after a while. I said, holy shit, to myself. I said, these guys are going to parole him. I was like, based on the questioning, based on the hmm. receptiveness of my uh, uh, limited testimony, I I thought to myself, holy, they're buying this, right? So the guy come. We come back from lunch. And the guy says what he says. He says, we're going to parole you. You're going to be in the, in the, in the custody of your, of your brother. Uh, you're going to go back to Pasadena. You're going to be tested. There's going to be probation. A whole long thing. You're going to go to meetings. And I went, holy mackerel, this could have been done years ago. You know what I mean? It wasn't sure. rocket science. He expressed remorse. They asked him various questions. He had been had his night, his, his throat slashed two years before from behind. Uh, for no reason, a guy just slashed his throat, and ran away. I mean, this is a tiny man who's 77, who's got all kinds of medical ailments and whatever you want to make of him. And literally uh, tiny. He's like five foot four. Yeah. And, I, I mean, consider some of the prisoners he's around. Mm, you, you know that. he was Right. OK. So, all so immediately after the parole hearing was over, the these people started hassling me saying he's not an alcoholic why did you say that they, they went right at me these these two women and i said look i don't know what you're talking about the guy said every day for years i'm sirhan i'm an alcoholic by his own admission in aa in prison right so i don't know i mean i'm just assuming that he assumes he is anyway they didn't want to hear that they were politically marxist motivated revolutionaries who were into some other prison reform and other agendas you know what i'm saying eric so that would be um your uh, wannabe director and I'm guessing Jen, Cat Eyes? Cat Eyes and the, the woman in the middle. Right. I, yeah. There was no problem from Angela or the other one. And and Paul, I guess, couldn't, you know, he was more into the getting him out. So it's it worked. I mean, uh, you know, but the proof was in the pudding. But these two didn't like it. And so I said, all right, whatever. And we started to have these strategy meetings and their strategy was to attack the Kennedys and to start publicizing Sirhan's success and, and go after the Kennedys, who immediately came out with these statements, as we were talking about. Kerry mm -hmm. and, and Rory, who haven't said anything in 15 parole hearings, all of a sudden flipped their lid and went berserk. Uh, Rory Kennedy said he may get out and take an Uber from Pasadena to Malibu and kill her. And I thought, OK, she's got to be joking. This is a 77-year-old tiny little man you know, who has no history of violence, committed one crime in his life when he was 26 years old. I mean, it's berserk. I mean, it's just insane. Uh, she wasn't even born when her father was killed. She was in the stomach of her, to make matters really weird, she wasn't even alive. Um, but nevertheless, the Kennedys started issuing um, denunciations. And, and I said, don't respond. Don't get into a shooting war with them. You have mm -hmm. achieved victory. They said, no, we have to respond and we have to keep writing editorials. And I said, you're going to lose. 
they have far more weapons, far more allies, far more friends in the media than you'll ever get. You've got, you, you know, five guys in the media. You know, who do you know? You know, well, Jen saying? has a crew. <laughs> Jen has a crew who we're going to see. But the other one, they, they, you know, contacted the New York Post and they contacted some other publications. And I said, you're not going to win this war. And my advice was to lay low. And, you know, to her credit, Angela, Angela Berry did not do much except respond, and, you know, hmm. Uh, in black and white and didn't get into the weeds on this thing. But I did not know that this Jen Abreu was involved in one of the craziest things I've ever seen in my life, which is this team in prison that she has assembled of a murderer's row of an all-star team of these guys who have been the advising staff, apparently, of Sirhan and her uh, on how to uh, have a parole hearing properly to get out. Now, these are guys... There's two guys who are the head of the Aryan Nation, Suge Knight. I mean, this, this is an incredible group. Let's look at him, this, this guy here. Okay, this Major is a personal advisor. I just so you know, okay, after, unbeknownst to me, that day when Sirhan was was awarded ostensibly uh, 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 parole based on, you know, if it went through the governor, this group that you just saw lifted him on their shoulders and paraded him around the prison yard in a victory celebration, unbeknownst to me. I had no idea this was going on. And uh, it's probably one of the craziest things I've ever heard. It was in the New York Post, uh, the article and other places like Ryan. The Intercept. Grimm. The Intercept with Ryan Grimm, that douche. Uh, he did a whole special on, on prison reform, how this is the most wonderful thing ever, that the prisoners... Look at this. This guy was Aryan Nation. Uh, no, 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 no. This is Guzman, uh, Mexican Mafia. Oh, Mexican Mafia. I'm sorry. Vietnam Mexican veteran, Mafia. killer. Right. Yeah. Um, I think related to El Chapo, but I'm not completely I'm sure. I'm not sure about that one. Who else you got there? Okay. Guzman. I've got uh, Cameron Morris, who's a gentle, loving crip. Okay. Right. He was good. He was um, good. Yeah, of course, uh, uh, Joel Baptiste, Aryan Brotherhood. He is the primary speaker. Of Ryan yes. Brent, Grimm uh, interviewed him and everything. It was now, a, keep in mind, keep great in mind. relationship. Newsom paroled nearly 700 murderers and killers. This, this guy, yeah, he killed this his guy killed partner. a no, uh, well, he killed a, a famous race car, um, like owner, enthusiast, and his oh, wife. Right, right. Okay, uh, pretty high profile. Um, right, these case. are lifers now, Eric, right? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. And then okay. this guy is, um, um, Roque Martirez, uh, Nuestra Familia. So Northern, I, I, Northern, uh, uh, Mexican mafia, right? These yeah. Are I, one, I think these are one. the killers and, okay. uh, you know, and some people might, might know this, this fella right oh, here. Boy. Yeah, oh, so boy. he's a sweetheart. Um, he embraced Sirhan and told him he knows what it's like to be hated because they said, he said that people said that he killed Tupac Shakur. And he said, he know it's the equivalent of Kennedy in his world. Is what he well, no, he said, actually, that Kennedy was bigger. He's oh, like, bigger. They, they told me, and that was Tupac Shakur. You right. killed a Kennedy. You killed a Kennedy. <laughs> you're, oh, you're like, oh. you're way. <laughs> right. You okay. Dumbass. <laughs> so dig. So these guys are his advisors. I didn't know anything about this. This just, this comes out after the parole hearing is completely blindsides me. It's in the New York Post. People have people flip out. The Kennedys flip out. Uh, the, keep in mind, Newsom, in the spirit of prison reform, pardoned something like 700 hardcore murderers this year alone, six to 700. <laughs> These are the guys that didn't make the cut, Eric. Mm -hmm. These are the guys that even Newsom said, oh, no. All right. Look, I've gone too far. I let 700 murderers out. This is this is about as far as I go. I think the prison's got these guys and nobody else in there, according well, to... Well, it wasn't Newsom, but, um, you know, you got other governors who pardoned okay, folks this, right, like this, this is Right. This is uh, Cuomo who pardoned David Gilbert for the Brinks robbery up up in uh, uh, Rockland County. Now, his son goes... His, his David Gilbert's son goes on to become the DA of San Francisco, Chase of Budin. Uh, and we know how that's going. That's going, that's really going well. pretty well. And, and but, this is Carrie. This is uh, what Carrie Kennedy's ex, who's pardoning this guy, right? This is the former <laughs> husband of Carrie Kennedy, who's flipping out that Sirhan would be paroled by Newsom. Okay, so she was in favor of this parole, who killed the cops and the, uh, the Brinks guards. Him and his wife, 
who's the mother of Chase Boudin. Weather Underground. Keep Weather Underground, mind. the two unrepentant, unrepentant, radical Marxist Weather Underground terrorists. Unrepentant. He mm. gets out after 40 years. He was serving life. And Chase Boudin is the DA of um, San Francisco, which is his his previous job was the translator to the dictator of Venezuela. I just, I just always love saying that. <laughs> that on his resume, it says, it says translator. You gotta have range. Got to have range. One right. day you're a translator, and next day you're a DA. You're working in Venezuela. The society completely collapses. Chavez uh, uh, dies, I guess, eventually. And you say, what else can I look? At? What else can I do? My parents are in prison. I was raised by Bernardine Dorn and 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 uh, uh, heirs, Bill yeah. Ayers. Yeah, right? o Obama, uh, Obama's um, trusted uh, uh, ghostwriter. Ghostwriter, yeah, right? mm, that guy. Yeah, I call my parents and they tell me that there's a position open as district attorney of San Francisco. Now you say, well, who was the last district attorney of San Francisco? Well, that was Gar Garcon, who's now the district attorney in Los Angeles. Where was he from? Oh, he was from Cuba. Really? He was born in Cuba. Now he's the district attorney of Los Angeles. Yeah. What is there a problem? What's the answer to the problem here? Anyway, these are all sidebar crazy things. But the reality of it is this group under the tutelage of uh, uh, Jen Abreu, okay, begins to go through my Twitter account. Unbeknownst to me, I have no idea what this is going on. They cherry pick this, this woman and her crew. She says her crew did it, her loving uh, <clears throat> inmate family decides one day, unbeknownst to me, to go through my Twitter account and cherry pick random tweets. Now, keep in mind, I'm, I'm a former editor of National Lampoon magazine. A lot of my tweets are dark, really dark humor and, and whatever. And you could cherry pick whatever you want in there. There's foul language, blah, blah, blah. It's Twitter, right? They cherry pick a bunch of these tweets. Some of them way ahead of the curve denouncing Casson and Newsom, <laughs> which, which really upset, which upset her greatly. She's like, these are our best friends. It's, right. it's harming us and our family. Right. Of our course, families. now one was recalled and the other one's waiting recall. So I guess I wasn't that far out on a limb because it turns out months later that these recalls uh, happened with one guy and the other one's about to be recalled. So this team apparently just going, who is this? <laughs> Who is this guy's Twitter account? This is who was looking at my Twitter account this whole time. They cherry pick a bunch of these tweets and they bring them to Sirhan. And they tell Sirhan, you got to write a letter to the legal team getting rid of Grobert because Grobert is going to keep you locked up in prison for the rest of your life. We got to get rid of Grobert. Otherwise, you're never going to get paroled. So, again, this has nothing to do with me. I don't know anything about it. But then I get the letter that Sirhan wrote. And in his letter, which we're going to put up on locals for you people. You want to be a member? That's going to be exclusive, by exclusive, the way. I mean, not though. everybody has letters from Sirhan Sirhan. Out right. There. I have a letter <laughs> being denounced, but denounced by Sirhan Sirhan. This is, I, I, I've finally achieved something in the history of, 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 of uh, assassination lore. And yes. Uh, this is a great day for me. It really is. Uh, it's a, it's a, My uh, mother would be proud of it. It's me. a Forrest Gump uh, <laughs> achievement. <laughs> this, this is going in my purse. I have a framed copy here. I didn't show you, Eric, but I do have a framed copy. Of here. course you do. <laughs> so wait, I couldn't... Wait, wait, which one's better, that or the um, the lawyer letter? I forgot his name. Oh, the the uh, the, the singer letter. Singer letter. Well, this is, this you can put them better. side by side, this though. Is 10 times better than the singer letter. <laughs> the, uh... Anyway, the point of the matter is... Um, I was being forced out and forced off the defense team by this letter. It, it, and Paul said to me, you know, Paul Schrade went to bat for me. I, I've now been privy to the internal emails um, going back and forth of this. Mm -hmm. they, they were released to me by Schrade, showing this uh, uh, bickering and infighting that Mark used the word C-U-N-T. Mark is against Newsom. Mark is against Gasson. Uh, all true, all true. But again, assassination conspiracy buffs since the beginning it's been a bipartisan movement eric it's never been um left or right there's been no left or right it never comes up just just so people know mm -hmm. it's never been an issue in terms of um the study of conspiracy lore the, consp the study of assassinations it never really it never comes up until i ran into these marxist revolutionaries and they had to make it a, a statement 
that uh, despite the fact that my discussion of him being in a blackout alcoholically influenced the uh, parole board to get him out, apparently I had to be destroyed <laughs> because I didn't, I, I, I couldn't play well with other Marxists in the Marxist playground. It was playground. working, damn it. You can't have that work. Makes you wonder. Well, I mean, every you know, other there, there 15 other instances of potential sabotage. Why not this one? That's what I thought. I told <laughs> that to Paul, and he he couldn't wrap his mind around it, you know. And I said, "Well, look, obviously somebody decided to get rid of me in this thing, and and uh, this was a way to do it. Is just I don't know, you know, cherry pick this thing, and and I mean RFK Jr. was in agreement with me at at by the way, at the parole hearing we had uh, um, Douglas Kennedy who got all uh, emotional uh, meeting uh, Sirhan for the first time. Uh, Bobby the third was there on, on the phone. RFK Jr. had sent a letter um, um, announcing his support, obviously, for Sirhan's parole. And, and Bobby's been very, uh, very strong about that since the beginning. Um, he is public. It, it's weird because our politics kind of aligned myself and Bobby Kennedy Jr. Well, don't but say they that out loud. Some of you will sound clipped. This. I know, but I know. <laughs> well, not. I don't know. I mean, not completely. I mean, you know, whatever. He's obviously getting a little red-pilled more and more, right, Eric? He's having some problems due to uh, the children's uh, health um, defense, I guess. I, I would say that he's sort of in the Joe Rogan camp right now. Right. Yeah. And there's others in that camp and there are different degrees of separation going on. And I was in that camp, you know, maybe four years ago, three years ago, whatever. Mm. So I get it. But the reality of it is um, they won't go after him. And it, it, even though and I asked Paul about it, I said, what's your opinion of Bobby Kennedy? He goes, he's nuts. He's a crackpot. You know, that's what I said. Really? <laughs> he's yeah, he's just he's just a crackpot. I said, OK, I, I guess I'm a crackpot. Too. We're all crackpots. But uh Anyway, so he tried to navigate this war against the bad Kennedys himself um, and in the media, trying to help uh, keep this thing going. And when they when the Kennedys came out with Rory and Kerry started to come out with their, um, you know, denunciation of the parole board, uh, they went yeah, this is the 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 documentary director, Rory Kennedy, right? Yep. Okay, she lives in Malibu. She's made some really bad documentaries and um, and statements and statements that are really, <laughs> really, really crazy. You know what I mean? Um, we could just get into these people here now. She yeah, let's talk about her for a minute. Okay, she made it. One of the documentaries she made was about her mother, Ethel Kennedy, and I just want to give tell you about this documentary because. Um, it was called Ethel about the life of her mother, right? Yeah. So the, the New York Times wrote as re, just as this New York Times wrote this as a review. Watching Ethel is a little like reading a classified report redacted by Dick Cheney. So much material is blacked out, it's almost impossible to follow. Now, this is from the New York Times, right? Okay. That's the friendly press. That's the friendly press. There was worse press than that about her documentary foray. Um she made a documentary called The Execution of Wanda Jean. And it's a, a, a black lesbian woman who kills her lover. Oh, here it is. Yeah. She kills her lover in a jilted uh, argument kind of thing. Right. And and she was drunk and she can't remember it. And this, this, wait, wait, what? Yeah. She yeah, was... yeah. 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 It, it was very similar. And the, the, the ironic twist is she eventually goes to the electric chair and uh, Rory Kennedy um, makes this documentary about this black lesbian woman who kills her lover, who's angry with her and um, goes to the electric chair. I can't remember and blah, blah, blah. So I thought, oh, it's an interesting movie. I'm watching the movie. It turns out near the end of the movie that they give you a little side piece of information. You ready for this? Hmm. You ready? Listen. Wanda Jean had killed her previous lesbian lover, gone to jail, got paroled, came out and got another new lesbian lover and killed her with a knife. 
<laughs> and I'm thinking, like, <laughs> and then goes to the electric chair. It, well, it was actually lethal injection. Oh, oh lethal injection. I'm sorry. It's been a while. Yeah. No, right. What's there? I, whatever I meant. The electric chair is a state of mind. Oh, I got you. Yeah. Right. I'm just electric chair. What difference does it make? <laughs> She's dead, folks. She's it, dead. It did occur. And, and the movie's about her on death row. I, I didn't, you don't see the, the, the thing. But anyway, the amount of empathy that she tries to create for this woman. <laughs> It's a, it's a love story, right? The amount of empathy she tries to create for this woman in this HBO documentary and the reverse, the reverse for Sirhan is breathtaking in, in the hypocrisy. The level of hypocrisy is just breathtaking in these two documents. Okay. So let, well, let's, uh, shall we look at another Kennedy then? What do you got now? Um, well, how about, how about this lovely lady? Okay. Now, now this Kennedy, which is her sister, this is this is Kerry Kennedy, another one of the denouncing, denouncing uh, Kennedys or bad Kennedys, as they say. She took some Ambien, was unconscious like a zombie, and drove her Lexus at 90 miles an hour into the back of a tractor trailer in Connecticut on the uh, 84 uh, interstate uh, one morning. Uh, this complete, is her mugshot, folks. That's her mugshot. Okay. This Kennedy is facing jail this particular kennedy because uh, although no one was killed uh she was driving a dangerous vehicle at 90 miles an hour unconscious for a long period of time i don't know how she got so far maybe it was on autopilot or something it was on cruise control but she doesn't recall she doesn't recall eric driving the car into the back of the um tractor trailer now, this is, of course, um, the recently disgraced governor's ex-wife, right? Uh, this is the former wife of Andrew Cuomo of New York. This particular Kennedy was married to Andrew Cuomo. Okay. She goes to trial, and in the trial, there's a jury, and they wheel in her mother in a wheelchair, Ethel Kennedy, to use as a prop. And here she comes. She's coming to the trial to just stare at the jury. And the first thing that she says on the witness stand, um, Rory Kennedy, the first thing she says to the jury Kerry. is, Kerry, I'm sorry, Kerry Kennedy, Kerry Rory. The first thing <laughs> Kerry says to the jury is, my father was killed by an assassin in 1968. I never had a father. And I'm thinking like, what does this have to do with driving uh, in a blackout on Ambien at 95 miles an hour, but they played the Kennedy card, which is the point of the story, which is why they wheeled in this woman. And which, by the way, I love that there was actually an article. I just saw it in passing. One of the headlines was, I don't play the Kennedy card. <laughs> Quoting her. <laughs> she was facing, a year, I think she was facing a year in jail under this, uh, these Connecticut state law. And she, um, I, I think was, give him probation she didn't do jail time or was acquitted i'm not really sure the final outcome but she didn't go to jail it's the point of the matter and here they are a crime that she didn't remember she couldn't remember doing it and hmm. she she couldn't have remorse because she couldn't remember they also could didn't have remorse uh for other kennedys who couldn't remember their crimes like ted kennedy killing the woman at chappaquiddick uh, mary Jo kopechny because he couldn't remember Patrick Kennedy couldn't remember driving his Mustang through the gate of the White House because he couldn't remember. This woman couldn't remember it because she was on Ambien instead of Synthroid, she said. She couldn't remember. None of these Kennedys seem to be able to remember the actual crimes that they committed, and it seems to work as a defense in their favor. I mean, here's a guy who has served, in case of Sirhan, over 50 years for whatever crime he committed, he doesn't remember. And Longer they, than I've been alive, by the way. He, he right. was in okay. before I was born. Right. And and for him, this even though he did the time, even if he even if he did kill their father, there's only one man in the state of California who served a longer sentence than, than this guy. So anyway, getting back to the Kennedys, um, this here's, can, here's, here's their statement. Oh right, right. This was on Instagram. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they can't even discuss it. Um, I guess they must have wanted him to go to the electric chair. The point of the matter is the the the, the Rory Kennedy is on a, a bunch of these social justice NGO boards. And if you look at their websites that she's on, 
All of them call for prison release, parole, rehabilitation, prison reform, the end of mass incarceration in prisons. Uh, this is a minority uh, in terms of being an Arab Amer American. Yeah, yes, yeah. He's a, a person. Refugee. Oh, he's a refugee think. from another country, from a war-torn country that he came from uh, during the war. Whatever you want to say, none of it, none of it applies when it comes to killing their father, of which he didn't do. But nevertheless, even if he did do it legally, according to the court, they have absolutely no mercy. I saw Chris Kennedy on uh, with local Fox here the other night, and he, the first thing they said to him, why should Sirhan not be paroled? The first thing he said was, Eric, he, he killed my father. There you go. There you go. I said, okay, thanks for thanks for coming. Thank you. Uh, which he didn't do again. But getting back to the storyline, um, this Rory Kennedy and these other Kennedys, RFK Jr. did the best he could. That's all I could say. Guy did the best he could, which led to, um, I guess, eventually Newsom having to make his decision. Mm -hmm. And. <laughs> I just, but before we get to the decision, I just wanted to let you know that I am privy to an internal email between Robert Kennedy Jr. and his sister uh, about using ethyl, using ethyl. I just want to read a little bit of this to the audience to show you the level that these people will go to. This is from RFK to his, to his sister, uh, to Kerry. Mummy is 93 years old, has Alzheimer's. Any action by her that you provoke is per se manipulation. Mummy's press release was clearly written by your hand and did not reflect her strongly held Catholic beliefs in redemption and forgiveness. It reflected poorly on her lifelong activism for human rights and prison reform. Others have pointed out that it casts a cloud of hypocrisy on her prior advocacy for sentencing reform and her pleas that we must temper justice with mercy and compassion, particularly for those indigent minority defendants like Sirhan, whose original representation was clearly inept, inadequate, and corrupt. These are the impulses that guided our family to publicly object to his death penalty. Your ghost-written letter served your agenda, but I believe it put Mummy in a terrible light, including robbing her of her integrity at the end of her life. And this goes on and on and on and on and on. And it is a damning, damning indictment of these other Kennedys by RFK Jr., who is clearly his father's son with his vaccination uh, movement, with his children's defense uh, uh, fund, Everything that his father would have been, this this guy is. And these scurryless sacks of shit who are using their own agenda to and the hypocrisy of keeping this guy in prison for their own uh, 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 feelings really is a demonstration of the political times that we live in today, in my humble opinion. I, I mean, agree. they really represent a zeitgeist, these Kennedys, with Newsom, with Newsom, with Garcetti, with Cuomo. This is a crew that are the antithesis of what Robert Kennedy espoused as a political candidate in 1968. They are the anti-Kennedys, even though they're Kennedys by blood, in my humble yeah. opinion. And RFK Jr. is an American hero. I mean, to stand up to these, it does him no good to go into the court of public opinion and do battle with his own family like this. I mean, it's a heroic <laughs> thing. I mean, what's it to him? He could have been quiet about all this stuff and live, you know, he's 66 years old. Anyway, I, I don't want to get off on RFK Jr. He's just a great, great hero. And he's put up with a lot. And as every single time they mention him in these articles, they add in the caveat that he's a uh, endorser of vax misinformation. And they have to put mm -hmm. that in. I mean, nothing to do with vaccines in the article. The right. fact it's that his family and he's a tragedy, whoever he is. It's a tragedy. It's a family battle and everything else. Right. Hey, thank you, um, South Texas gal. Amazing. I really, thank really you. deeply appreciate that. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so now, we, I mean, I'm sorry, this is a, a little bit of a twisted story because we're trying to get a lot in here on one episode. Uh, so kind of bear with us because I wanted to get to the... the this is the reversal. Is this what you wanted or... The Gavin the, Newsom justification? Yeah, yes. Yeah, that's what I have here. Do you have that? If you could put yeah. that up on the screen. Yeah, this is the uh, indeterminate sentence parole release review. Um, yeah, make right. a bullet points. 
with the bullet points. Yeah, that's really what I wanted to get into here, because the first couple of pages, he's citing different um, uh, previous laws. And then on page three, the first bullet point that you see at the bottom of page three, uh, this one. Yeah, thank you. While in police custody after his arrest in June 1968, Mr. Sirhan admitted that he assassinated uh, Senator Kennedy in a recorded statement. Uh, this is a bald ass lie. This never happened. This is Newsom lying in a signed, sworn document. This never happened on no planet, no parallel universe, and no alternate Earth. Okay. The bottom of that, it says the evidence that Mr. Sirhan shot and killed Senator Kennedy in an act of premeditated murder is overwhelming and irrefutable. It's an absolute irrational lie and an irrational statement. Nothing could be further than the truth. This assassination has been contested since day one by hundreds of books, hundreds of uh, people, all kinds of coroner's report analysis. If anything, it is beyond anything overwhelming and irrefutable. That is an incredibly insane statement just to open up on this document. And then on the next page, which is showing up there at his trial. Okay, that's fine. Right, okay. The, the parts that were of interest to me in these bullet points are the fact that repeatedly Sirhan's and I, I don't know why Newsom citing it, but he is. He can't recall because he was drunk. Um, numerous times he says this, and apparently it's not enough for Newsom that he believes there's no remorse. I mean, he says there's a quote in in that that Sirhan gets into. I just wanted to find this quote uh, talking about remorse because this is a big deal apparently. Uh, Senator Kennedy was the hope of the world, and I injured and harmed all of them. And it pains me to experience that the knowledge, such a the knowledge in such a horrible deed. If I did in fact do it, I'm still responsible for being there and probably causing the whole incident through my own gun or other guns. If that's not a statement of remorse, I don't know what is. But in 1989. Uh, Sirhan says, I am totally sorry and feel nothing but remorse for having caused this tragic death. He is a lying sack of shit, Newsom. And this entire document, which apparently goes on and on and on, cherry picking from 15 parole hearings, various one line statements. There it is later in 1989 at his parole hearing. Mr. Sirhan told the board he could not remember the details of the crimes. One thing consistently about Sirhan is he keeps saying, I don't recall. I can't express remorse for what I don't recall. I mean, am I wrong, Eric? Or No, he's been consistent. I mean, the, the whole mind control hypnosis, he's been under hypnosis since then to see if he can recall it under hypnosis. Right. Um, right. There's a, I mean, a lot there. There's a lot there. But, I mean, the, the fact that Newsom, uh, if they can prove without doubt Okay, you don't have to prove without a doubt to be paroled after 55 years. Again, as the as the commissioner said to me in the parole hearing, Sirhan was sentenced to life with parole, not life without parole. We would not be here today, he said, if Sirhan Sirhan was sentenced, which he wasn't, to life without parole. They could have. They did not. To deny him parole after 50 plus years in prison at the age of 77 is barbaric and goes against everything the Kennedys and Newsom and Newsom politically believe and politically have acted on through their political careers. And that's the point of this show is to point out the hypocrisy of these people uh, who happen to have these beliefs for others and not for themselves. Just like everything else. Just like every every effing thing else they do. Um, we will get into the evidence. The evidence is, is overwhelming evidence. Overwhelming. Thomas Noguchi's autopsy clears him of the crime. Anybody, if he had a legal representation that was worth its salt, but they were part of the deep state back then, and we'll get into that again in other episodes. This is just about the parole hearing. Again, you do not go into a parole hearing and relitigate the case claiming innocence. That's not mm. what you do. That's why he's been through 16 freaking parole hearings. Parole's because, about forgiveness, not about changing. And it's also about prison behavior and change mm. in prison. It's all, mm. You know what I mean? It's also about redemption in prison. And clearly that's stated here. And anyway, so getting, getting back to um, 
this document that you're showing here on page seven, um, d- despite what the parole board says, Newsom simply says, I disagree. Not only has Mr. Sirhan failed to meaningfully disclaim political violence, dude, this is the craziest thing in the world. In 1973, some offshoot of the PLO took over an embassy in the Sudan and mentioned Sirhan's name. It has nothing to do with Sirhan. It, right. it was some wacky group in, in the Sudan. And this is 40 years ago. And here Newsom is bringing it up that like he's in, in cahoots with them. This is crazy. I mean, he he doesn't seem to understand pol- the po- politics of it. Um, he failed to meaning meaningfully disclaim political violence. He lacks the skills required to control his response to external triggers. A guy cut his throat three years ago, and he did nothing about it. This is a crock of shit. That's all I'm trying to tell you. It's a complete crock of shit. Um, let alone, he goes, he goes, I am not persuaded that Mr. Sirhan understands the steps required to manage even a quotidian, quotidian uh, interpersonal conflict, let alone the complex geopolitical hazards he must navigate in California and beyond if he is allowed to, par- to parole. Mr. Sirhan cannot be safely released because he has refused to acknowledge these risks and to develop the skills to mitigate them. He can't be released for that reason. While Mr. Sirhan has undoubtedly matured in some ways, Eric, over the last 53 years, <laughs> this is this. The record evidence shows that he has not internalized his rehabilitation programming sufficiently to reduce his risk of future dangerousness. This man is a danger. It says repeatedly says that he's a danger. Serious threat to public safety. One of the last lines in the thing. Um, Mr. Sirhan poses a risk to public safety because he lacks insight. His refusal to accept responsibility for the assassination of Senator Kennedy, his failure to renounce political violence, and his lack of the requisite skills to manage complex external triggers. Well, hold on here for a second. Look at the top of page eight. Okay. Psychology. Here yeah. we go. Read that. The psychologists who evaluated Mr. Sirhan in 2010, 2015, and 2020 rated him a low risk for future violence. Oh, yeah. Despite his deficits and in insight. Right. Well, he just continues to report this, Newsom, and then says, I just disagree. He just says it. <laughs> he writes it and he goes, I disagree because I am a, a governor. Wh- who cares what these psychologists have said? Uh, second. I have given special consideration to age factors. He's 77 years old and has served 53 years. While the psychologist who evaluated Mr. Sirhan in 2021 found that Sirhan, quote, has has not had any significant problems with his advancing age, the commissioners of Mr. Sirhan's parole hearing determined that he is significantly incapacitated as far as committing additional crimes. He's got kidney problems, got all kinds of health problems. It's just ridiculous. The 77-year-old man is going to take an Uber uh, to Malibu to off the Kennedys, as uh, Rory suggested in an earlier tweet. So that being said, it's just an absolute crazy, crazy case. Um, And we'll put this on Locals. Yeah, we're going to put this up on Locals with the letter and some of the other documents that um, uh, are related to the case. Now, look, the guy may be the biggest dick in the world, that's not what this is about. The guy did his time. He was serving life with parole. He did his time. They have letters of commendation from the prison guards. Okay? The the case needs to be reopened. That's a separate issue. The prison guards wrote letters of commendation. Very rarely does that happen. The guy did his time. Either we're a nation of laws with a humane justice system or we're not. You can't release 700 murderers and keep this one guy here. And the reason Newsom says he did it, the number one reason, was Bobby Kennedy was his hero. Well, Mickey Mantle was my hero, okay? (laughs) That doesn't, doesn't, I can't use that as an excuse to get away with murder. You know what I mean? The point of the matter is, he says, when you come in my office, the first thing you see is a photograph of Robert Kennedy, okay? Okay, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. You're a Democrat. You want to run for president. You're you want money. You want the Kennedys to help you. I get it. But have some sense of of decency, sir. At long last, have some sense of decency. I mean, it's just astonishing to me how 
how backwards this this guy is and how backwards these Kennedys are in terms of their own political beliefs. It, it really is astounding. But it's our father. But it's our father. <laughs> and um, I, I see in the chat that Cassie disagrees. She wants him to stay in forever. That's good for you. That's really yeah. nice. Okay. <laughs> that's, that's great. Okay. I guess Cassie joined late. <laughs> yeah. I guess she must have missed some of that rant. But the, the, the point of the matter is, you know, these people, the hypocrisy of them is just breathtaking. How they're, you know, it's it's rules for thee, but not for me, as you said, Eric. I mean, they they obviously have their own agenda, and you can't kill our father. You know, again, I don't know in the criminal justice system is there a law on our books that says if you kill a celebrity, you go to jail for a longer period of time than a regular person. You know, one woman, to her credit, wrote a op-ed for the Sacramento Bee last week. Uh, calling Newsom a hypocrite and saying, are we supposed to believe? Oh, yeah, here it is. Um, I, I just want to give a shout out to this, this journalist up in Sacramento, uh, Robin Epley. And the headline was, Governor Gavin Newsom got it horribly wrong. Sirhan Sirhan deserved to be granted parole. And in her op-ed op for the paper, uh, she says simply, if Sirhan had killed anyone else but RFK, would he still be in prison today? The answer no. is likely no. And that's that's really the crux of the case. Do we have a separate law for killing a Kennedy or do we not? Is yeah. that a crime on the books that I haven't seen that's called killing a Kennedy code 702345B? You killed a Kennedy and then... That's why. And, and I keep guess, in mind, he wasn't even president. Chapman um, shot Reagan. Now he didn't kill Reagan, but he managed to be out and getting uh, uh, you're talking, you're talking a visitation. About you're talking about Hinckley. Oh, Hinckley. Sorry. No, right. yeah, no, no. Hinkley. I was going to mention Hinckley because the Hinckley case. <laughs> I mean, if that bullet had been one inch to the left, uh, Reagan would have been dead. Oh, it's close. Right. It, it was oh, very. Close. It was very close. Yeah. Right, and he's home watching this show right now. Well, and, no, he's he's got a, a music career. He's got. Oh, he's, little, not, he's, he's making he's albums. He's yeah, making he's got albums. Music but sometimes videos he takes a break and he watches America's Untold Stories, as everyone should. <laughs> they they all should, and maybe he'll write you a letter. Then you could have two. Oh, that would be a great part of my collection if I can get a get a, get a Hinkley, <laughs> a Hinkley and a Sirhan. Holy cow! Um, anyway, it was a good editorial by this woman, a short editorial, but uh, she mentions Angela Berry. But the, the reality of it is, she's right, and and. The, the hypocrisy of the times we live in just continue to amaze me politically. It just mm -hmm. is, they do not care that they say today, you know, today is Friday and it's not. It's just it's, you know, like I said, I, Sirhan might be the biggest dick in the world, you know, but that's not the really the point here. You know, uh, uh, either you have parole, or you don't have parole. If you don't want them out, you know, OK, I'm sure that happens in Turkey. I'm sure that happens in Afghanistan. I'm sure it happens all over the world. You know, where if you killed a celebrity family member of the uh, Shah's family, they would probably shoot you in the head. I was going to say, yeah, you probably wouldn't be in prison still. Right. <laughs> there, there is that slight difference. This, right. is a, this is like the Tower of London, right? Right. <laughs> I mean, I mean we've, we've got these people now where Snowden has to live in an apartment building in Moscow. Assange has to be in the Tower of London. Sarah has to be in, in this prison down in, in, in San Diego. Nobody's allowed out. They're too dangerous, Eric. They're too dangerous. They can't be allowed out because of the danger that they bring if they came on the streets. You know. Well, if you take um, what is it, Skakel and uh, Teddy, they've already killed more than uh, Sirhan. Well, I don't know about Skakel, but Teddy for sure. <laughs> Skakel's highly debatable, but okay. uh, definitely, definitely Ted Kennedy. I mean, he, the guy was a murderer, and how much time did he do in jail? I don't think so. I think he was busy being a lion of a Senate eventually. Yeah, well. and running for president. Wow. Yeah. It's, it's, look, it's I, 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 look, I come from a Kennedy Democrat background, but hypocrisy is hypocrisy. I mean, you know, they're good Kennedys and they're bad Kennedys in that whole bunch. And we've mm -hmm. seen I think we've seen them play their hand in this affair. Now, that being said, February 2023, uh, Sirhan is up for parole again. And mm -hmm. I am going to predict that Newsom will win re-election in November of this year. And I will predict that once that election is behind him, uh, he may reconsider paroling Sirhan in February of 2023. If Sirhan's even alive. 
If he's still, yeah, I mean, look, you know, at some he's point. He's got yeah. health issues. He's in the late 70s. Not the best environment in the world for longevity right. by any account. I mean, right. at least he has his friends, his friends of Jen, who are going to hopefully look out for him. Right. Uh, it's a new crew, friends of Jen. But friends of Jen. <laughs> but, I mean, you got to take into consideration, maybe their advice didn't work. Maybe. You know, maybe maybe, maybe that um, helped give the Kennedys an edge. Maybe traipsing around and carrying somebody on the shoulder and with a bunch of killers is that not was, the Let best. me tell you something. A lot of people read that article in, in the papers. It was a bunch of different papers, obviously, and were simply appalled. They were simply appalled. I mean, that, that was a bridge too far, I think, even for some progressive uh, prison reform people. The idea of parading this guy around the prison yard in celebration um, might have been the death knell to his parole, in my humble opinion. Yeah, if it was, you know, people who had already served time and they were going back to counsel him or, you know, yeah. whatever. Yeah, I had no idea. That, but that that just, it looks really... And, and then they talk about how they're manipulating the system to do it. And yeah, it's yeah. Like, they were training him on how to beat the man at his own... If I, I, again, I didn't know any of this, and I'd have to reconsider... If, you know, really strongly if I would have gotten involved, if I knew any of this before that uh, incident. I, Again, um, I didn't know anything about this. And, you know, it's just it's un, un, unknown at that time on my part. But I mean, wow. Wow. And to and to brag about it with Ryan Grimm, um, the guy on The Intercept saying this is one of the great moments of prison reform. Just, yeah. Yeah. Glenn Greenwald's best friend. Glenn, oh, God. That's right. <laughs> That's right, Glenn's. Yeah, best. yeah. He, 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 what a smarmy piece of crap that Ryan Grimm is. I, every time I look at that that <laughs> face, I, it just he is the face of that movement in a lot of ways. He's just a oh, disgust me. Really does. Really. Does. All right. Well, we we're going to pull out on a happy note. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So, okay. What do we have to uh, be happy about? No, we have a lot of material going to locals. Uh, oh yeah. Trying to get a dump down there for everyone. Right. Um, don't know what's going to happen this week. We still haven't resolved whether there's going to be a Baldwin or not. Right. Couple. Um, you know what? I, I think that um, we have a story about Monopoly coming up. I, I think that would be a good one. I think that's hopeful. Good spirits. We won't break what it's about, but I think it's good. You know, board games and living. I think Everyone that's a, those board games. I think uh, so. Right. We got that. We got Baldwin. We got. Uh, Sonora House, the Jonas Salk story coming up. Um, Jonas Salk, absolutely. We've got, what about the, the greatest secret terrorist U.S. bombing in history? That we no, talked that's about, another second one. Second to 9-11 that nobody knows about uh, to this day from 1916. Um, no, definitely, but we might want to put that one after something hopeful. <laughs> oh, 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 I see. We're, we're in a hopeful. Uh, yeah, I'm uh, just saying, you know, remember, I said we're, we're going to pull this out. <laughs> and right, be Sorry, I was thinking about that. Yeah, myself. remember Toga Party. Oh, we got the Toga Club. Party. That was, yeah, that was fun. That's hopeful. When is yeah. that? February 14th? Uh, no. Uh, well, that's Fat Tuesday, Valentine's you Day. said? Didn't you say Fat yeah, Tuesday? Fat Tuesday, but I don't think that's the 14th. That'd be funny if that's Valentine's Day as well. I don't oh, think well, I'm is. saying it's around. When is Fat Tuesday? It's the 15th. Oh, what did I say? 14th. Okay. But, but you put a holiday together with another holiday. So I okay. was like, I'm oh, staying oh, roughly break. in that book. That uh, okay. Okay. We're gonna, uh, we'll do the uh, world's largest toga party that yes. I produced in New Orleans. Um, this is a crazy story, even for me. <laughs> this is, I put on the world's largest toga party uh, at Tulane University with Otis Day and the Knights when I was at National Lampoon in 1987. Um, LBJ will be coming up in the future. Yeah, LBJ, too. we're going to start with the women of LBJ. Eric and I have put together mm -hmm. the first of three, Dougie, is going to be the women of LBJ. That's how we're going to get into it with his. I wonder person. if that could be Valentine's Day. No, that, That's interesting. The women of LBJ <laughs> we'll, we'll talk. <laughs> are going to get into his promiscuity as an entrance into his life. I think that'll serve us well. Okay, and Chase, we'll be probably getting together with Chase uh, I'll have to figure out how to schedule it all out. Right. But, yeah, we're um, going to get into that separately after we, we're done with this parole thing. This is just to button up the parole today. Uh, but then we're going oh, yeah. to get into the mind control radio man and uh, some of the other hypnotic uh, things with Chase. And I'm sure Chase would like to see the letter so we can send him a copy, Eric, through oh, a back, sure. a sure. back panel if you like. Um, yeah. It's a rare letter, so he, I'm sure, would like to see 
the wording and everything else, the penmanship. And it's not as good as the Splenda packet <laughs> with, that we had yesterday. Boy, with, uh, by the way, that's drawing up controversy. I've made some people annoyed. I'm boy, sorry. People, yeah. It's well, inconclusive. It could be the same, but I'm saying it's inconclusive. I found other handwriting from the 90s that supports my stance. But people say sorry. that handwriting changes over the years, though, Eric. It can, sure. Yeah. But the point is that if the handwriting on the drawings is similar to the 98, that would imply it was even uh, more consistent over time. Right. And we've got some interviews that you've got some back channel interviews with some uh, crew. I'm for- working on that. I, I One of them's already up. I put it on Locals um, yesterday. It was right. with Kira Murdoch. I thought it was a really fascinating interview. I learned a lot about First off, I didn't know what the hell I thought first AC was a camera operator and they're actually a focus puller. And right. And part of the problem is that focus pullers don't exist anymore because they've switched to digital. A lot of this problem in these vernacular. Well, they, they still do it. They just use electronics and right, there's an right. re- electronic remote that's doing it. So it's yes, a weird. Yes. yes. Um, but, but then again, there's guys who shoot on film who still use mm-hmm. the old stuff. I mean, it, it's it's a weird time. In terms of the film industry, most of it is digital, like she was saying with the, with the AC and stuff like that. Splenda is welcome to sponsor the channel. Anyone's welcome to sponsor, and we should get into that. Brought to you Obviously, by Splenda. Right? PayPal uh, is great. Um, Listen, if you want to PayPal me, I will answer your intimate questions about this case personally. <laughs> <laughs> and then the money. Look, there's a lot of books I need to get on this case, so there is money that uh, I need from PayPal. So keep that in yeah. mind. Uh, PayPal or Venmo, we, we we're we're neutral. We'll, we'll yeah, take either. I'll take either one. one. I just need to get books and hair products. I'm Eric Honley on Cash App. If somebody wants it, I found out that I do actually have an account there. So now, how do okay. they subscribe, Eric? To this, why can't why can't the people subscribe? I mean, what is stop? Well, they just hit the hit the button down below. No, no. But let me ask you: Why are they being stopped from subscribing? Like, why can't they subscribe? I don't know. Okay. It's so an affliction. Saying, We're saying, going to help them. Uh, we'll help, look, you know what? In fairness of people who don't want to subscribe. Why don't they well, subscribe? But, but, don't you know, know what? This is a dating thing, right? So just keep coming back. It's like we're return dates. We're not asking you to marry us, but give it a shot. But I think they, you might they, enjoy it. It doesn't cost anything to subscribe, right? You just push the red button or what do you do? Yeah, push the red button. Preferably you hit the bell too with all notifications. So oh. you usually get notifications. Now, Otherwise, the, locals is a separate it. thing, right? So that, yes. that's 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 like, uh, unstructured.locals.com, that's and you can follow us for free there. Now, uh, the material you were, we're putting up is for paid people, but there is a lot of other stuff that is free. Other community members put things up that are really cool to read as well, and that's all free. I do a weekly show with Nate called No Holds Bar, uh, Nate the Lawyer, um, most weeks. That's free. So there's a lot that's free. So if you wanted to just go follow us on locals and say, hey, I like it here, and then you know support us later if you wish, we'd love that. I mean, it all helps a lot. Right. So, so with that note, we're out. That's it. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Have a fabulous evening, everybody. Peace out. That was cool. <laughs>